the supposedly taking Utah Jazz, 3-0. and The Spurs, 2-1. and Maybe Wembenyama's not that good. Let's run it back. Run it up, to run it back. Yeah. Run it up, to run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Happy Monday morning. Our first full official NBA weekend is in the books. We are joined as we will always be by stadium insider Shams Sharania. I swear that Monday morning tongue twister Shams. Uh, We've got 10 year NBA vet Evan Turner in the house. And of course, the co-host with Kevin Durant of the et cetera's Eddie Gonzalez. Gentlemen, how are we feeling? Feels like a Monday. (laughs) (laughs) Feels like a Monday. Well, basketball's back. So it's a good Monday. I know. First full weekend. And there's a lot of, dare I say, confusing storylines going on. People doing what we didn't think they could do. People doing what we knew they were going to do. And we're going to just jump right into it. First with a team that I I believe is not doing what we thought they would do. And that is the Philadelphia 76ers, who so far are winless on this season. They are 0-3, having been beaten by the San Antonio Spurs. And we'll get to all that. But a very slow start indeed for this team, Evan. How concerned are you? I'm not really concerned considering the two losses that they came up against. Granted, yesterday, playing versus Spurs, you don't ever want to lose to a team that's perceived to be worse than you. But offensively, in a game where, you know, offense matters in general, they're really kicking it up. And I think if they do something to uh, at least attempt to play a little bit of defense, I think they'll go on a (laughs) run. (laughs) Attempt to play a little bit of defense, Eddie. (laughs) Well, I'm with Evan. You know, they lost to what might be the two best teams in the league to start the season. You, it's tough to get that schedule. Uh, you you see James is averaging 26 points a game, nine assists. Joel averaging 27. He just dropped 40. Uh, you even have Tyrese Maxey averaging 20 points a game. They're going to get buckets. Their offense is a little stagnant, but it's just going to be with James. You got to worry about their defense. I, I thought the defense would be an issue when the playoffs come because they just have – Lineups that feature a ton of guys who aren't great at the point of attack. James, Maxi, Tobias, even George Niang off the bench. But yeah, it's 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 looked bad so far. But look, they're gonna win a lot of games this season. They'll be fine in that sense. And maybe they can sure up that defense by playoffs. Yeah, and I, I'm curious what what ET thinks about this, but just the hierarchy, I'm curious to just monitoring from James Harden, Joel Embiid. They're both obviously Joel Embiid had a big last game, 40 points plus but he's still coming back from conditioning he dealt with plantar fasciitis in the summer so he's kind of coming into the year a little step behind but James Harden is playing well you have Tyrese Maxey Tobias Harris both guys that have been you know Tobias Harris was the number two option throughout last season so he's taken a little bit of a role change and uh, and and you know Tyrese Maxey has a lot of potential to be the number two guy on this team as well so I'm curious how the hierarchy plays out in Philly I think the hierarchy has to show up you know, and not make any excuses. At the end of the day, they don't have a luxury of a bench. We can make excuses for, you know, them trying to get figured out and rolling, but I'm not necessarily trusting a bench of Harold, Niang, or even, you know, uh, uh, DeAndre Melton. So I think right now the big dogs really have to show up and perform the whole year, earn their check, and, uh, you know, have to do it by committee. They have a strong five or six that can really make sure that, you know, things occur where they can go on runs, but they have to stay healthy and, you know, really be accountable. You know, PJ Tucker uh, yesterday taking sort of that leadership role, voicing the frustration, being very vocal about it. Doc already having to address a lot of questions that are probably not fun to answer. So what is the next step? What happens? How do they get this thing back on track, Eddie? So it is about defense. It is about effort that lands squarely on those guys' shoulders. Somebody like PJ Tucker's shoulders, you know, the, the Celtics were not running from him when they played him. The Bucks were not running from him when they played him. Now you run that risk. You sign him at that age at that contract and you give him a player option at the end of that contract as well. You're putting a lot on his shoulders. Uh, I, I think Sean's mentioned it and I, this is going to come up as well. We got to worry about Joel Embiid's conditioning. He's got to be the anchor of their defense in so many different ways. He's got to cover up so many of the warts they have on that perimeter. Uh, so it's going to start there. It's just about, you know, them locking in, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, the schedule will get easier. We'll see them beat up on some bad teams, and we'll see, you know, another a 40-point game from James pretty soon, and it'll be all sunny out there. Look, the the Eagles are 6-0. and the, the Phillies are in the World Series. They're lucky right go. now. They're, they're not going to feel the wrath just yet. They got time. And, uh, but by the time that World Series is over, they might want to be ready. 
I, I would think someone who's probably happy that there's a lot going on in Philly sports right now is Doc Rivers because it feels like a tale as old as time. You know, Doc Rivers, hot seat talk. It starts at some point almost every single season. Is, is there anything that we need to worry about? Is there anything that Doc needs to worry about? I suppose we're fine. But Shams, do you hear anything? Is it too early in the season to even be thinking about those kind of talks? I, I do think it's a little early in the year. They, there's a lot of, of power that Doc Rivers has in Philadelphia. When you look at a roster perspective, he's very involved throughout the organization. Um, you know, throughout the offseason, he had he he led a lot of the meetings with Joel Embiid, with James Harden when they were trying to get James Harden and his role defined in the offseason before he took a pay cut. Doc Rivers was right there in, in all those meetings, and so I think th there's going to be a leash here this season for them to see how this year goes and. And, and really see how this team can can gain a chemistry because this is really their first year, full year together. So I do think they'll, they'll give Doc Rivers every opportunity. Uh, but listen, if this team struggles and it's the midway point of the year, we know how Philadelphia is. Uh, so it will be curious to monitor. Yeah, I agree with Shums. Um, I, I don't think Doc should be nervous. I think even if he does get fired, isn't he already in the Hall of Fame? You know what I mean? So, 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 so is he really tripping? But I think at the same time, in the same way, you have to really weigh the pros and cons on where would you go from here. And you have to really be honest with the franchise because everybody keeps putting these championship aspirations, but they haven't made it past the second round since the rebuild. So I think sometimes the fans have to dig deep in and, and really look in, in and see weigh the pros and the cons on what the truth is. Yeah, that process a, seems to have it. Go ahead. I was going to say, Doc is in a tough spot. When you have James, your offense is going to be the James offense for uh, long points of the game. Uh, I know they had that dribbling stat the other day. That's probably kind of typical. You can have a lead guard like that. But look, it's going to be a lot of high pick and roll. It's going to be a lot of guys having to be stagnant in the corners and, and on the weak side. And that's not necessarily Doc's fault. That's just kind of the, the situation they put themselves in. Um, I think he'll be fine at least until the all-star break, but we'll see. Uh, Shams must be getting some really hot breaking news. Just had to, had to duck out. <laughs> he'll be back. I'm sure at some point, and I can't wait to hear what that phone call is about, but we'll move things over to the Portland trailblazers. A, a very surprising three and O hot start for the blazers and 41 points for Dame yesterday. Eddie, you had him as your long shot MVP. And I think I, I thought that was silly at the time, but how are you feeling today on this Monday? Well, look, he's he's had a big week, so uh, I'm not gloating just yet. We're only three games into the season, <laughs> Fair. but 34, 34 points a game, uh, third in the league scoring. He looks like Dan. He, he, like I said, we didn't get to see that last year, so you almost forget how great he can be in the right settings. But he's been helped as well. Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant was a huge pickup for them. Hit the game winner versus the Lakers after a huge shot from Dame. Uh, they're just a better team. They're healthy and they're a team that wants to win. And sometimes a team that's just going to try hard and cares more, that's going to help you through most of the regular season. Right. Uh, I agree with Eddie. I talked to Dane yesterday right after the game, just congratulating him on a big run and a big week. And one thing he said was, uh, we have toughness and we're together. And I responded and said, that's better than being 12 deep. And he was like, on God. And I think that's one thing that's, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one thing that's really being said and uh, that's really being shown right now is their toughness. Because, uh, you know, and sticking together, because even though Dane's having these crazy games, we have yet to see great games from Ant Simons. We've seen a couple of, you know, one game winning from him when he stepped up, but he's still developing as a number two. And I think the more and more he develops, the better and better that team goes. And that energy and chemistry it's all part of a culture. Dane's a winner and he's going to carry people with him. So the sometimes vibe seems having, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sometimes having that, sometimes having that continuity and having that leadership already in place makes a huge difference, especially early in the season as teams are trying to figure themselves out. I obviously have a much well-respected coach in Chauncey Billups, but Dame is, that's his franchise. He's been there since he was drafted. He'll be there until he's done. Uh, it was dope to see the end of the Suns game. They give that shot to Anthony Simons and Dame shouts him out afterwards, says, Hey, that, that's what we're going to expect you to do with that big contract now. And yeah, a running hook shot. You got that in the bag, ET? Like, is that, is that there nah. for you in crunch time when you need it? <laughs> hey, I might make it in crunch time, but no other time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they, they clearly have an established hierarchy like we just spoke about with the Sixers. And I think it, it wins itself out late. And, and Jeremy Grant, he's just one of those players who can plug and play. You saw that with him on the Olympic team. You've seen it with him other stops uh, along the way for him. 
uh, that was a huge pickup for them this offseason. Shams, you all right? Anything good? Uh oh. We lost him. We lost him. We lost him. We lo- we lost we'll him. We'll have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, we got the news now. is so hot. It's, Michelle, it's, it's Monday morning, so there's always calls coming in, whether it's injuries and, and the trade fronts. But as far as Portland goes, I, I actually agree a lot with Eddie. This this Portland team came in with a lot of expectations. The future of Jeremy Grant wasn't certain. Um, he is extension eligible starting December. So it's going to be curious to see, does he commit to a long-term future in Portland? But overall, it's good that they're off to this promising start because it bodes well for their future and, and Dame being there uh, for the for the long term. Well, let's get down to the details on this because obviously the vibe is good. It's the new season. Happy vibes going on. But do they have enough actual pieces is, is there something glaring that's missing for this team to really make a run at anything, Evan? I just think depth. Um, you know, although they have experience in their first five or six, they're super, super young, you know, uh, and on the back end. And I think that's one thing. And um, yep. like we said earlier, it's so heavy. Dane, you know, he has to stay healthy. You know, in any situation, if he goes down, it might turn into a situation like last year. Yeah, I think they're going to expect Shadon Sharp to step up at some point this season, obviously. Uh, and like the rest of the league, they're looking for a mobile big who can help stretch out their defense and can help make their offense a little more versatile. Now you look at Jeremy Grant, he's a huge guy. Maybe he's that as you get closer to the playoffs and you want to get shorten your rotation a little bit. But for now, look, they're 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 just happy to be here at the moment. It, it's 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 a three and zero start, but they beat the Kings and the Lakers. It's not the hugest wins ever, but it's nice to see them pull out close games early in the season and start building that camaraderie. Well, in fairness, they beat a Lakers team that, for some reason, people still had weird higher expectations for, based <laughs> on what I see it to be nothing. But that brings us to the Lakers. We were able to hold off for twelve minutes in talking <laughs> about this team, but here we are, zero and three. Who wants to start? How do you fix? The Lakers. Evan, why don't you start? I, I'm going to sit back for this. I, I'm not, I, I'll defend the middle of the pack, guys. As a non shooter myself, I want everybody to stop being up on a guy that's <laughs> not hitting three. <laughs> Bobby Walker, Kendrick Nunn, and Russell Westbrook, or those other guys showed up and said, Hey, I'm a jump shooter. You know what I mean? Literally. So <laughs> I, I definitely want to defend, defend the three point shooting. And I, other than that, I mean, it's it's a tough start. It's definitely a tough start considering the fact that Anthony Davis had 22, 10, and 6 blocks yesterday. And, you know, LeBron, he's still putting up 30 at night. But I, I think the chemistry and the overall uh, fit isn't ideal right now. And they have to do something on, you know, the trade blocks. Yeah, I hate to sound so dour, but I'm not sure how they fix this. Shams had a report this morning about – what's available out there for Russell Westbrook and, you know, he can get it to a little more, but there's no magic trade package that, that's out there. That's like, okay, cool. Now LeBron has two, three and D guys around him and a slashing point guard and they're a decent team. Now that's not available. Do they just make more threes? LeBron, <laughs> LeBron said himself, it's not a team of shooters. We're not going to just start knocking them down. Um, you know, they're playing the running joke on the, the first night of the season. They're playing a, a Uber driver to guard Steph Curry, but they really were. They really were playing a door dasher to, to guard Steph Curry. So that's just the nature of their, of their roster right now. They have some cap space coming up this off season. This year might just be about LeBron passing Kareem. I hate to say it. But oh my it, gosh. It that is so that. depressing. That is so depressing. Yo, Three games in. The greatest player <laughs> know, of all time. Like, enjoy it. Like consolation, you know? it's a consolation. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good prize. Do you know how depressing <laughs> that really is with <laughs> seven, 79 games left to go? And we're like, well, I guess the moral victory is we can celebrate LeBron passing Kareem. Hey. That's tough, Shams. That's too early. Yeah, you, you know what? I'm going to look at the other side of this. The Lakers could really be 2 and one right now. They had a shot to win the Clippers game. They had, they had a tough finish to that game. They played well defensively. And then last night, they were, or yesterday, they were up 98 to 90 with about four minutes and 42 seconds left. Russell Westbrook comes back into the game, and they end up losing. They, the Portland, Portland goes on a 16 to 6 run to finish the game. Westbrook goes 0 for 2 in those four minute plus of, of, of action. Um, and that miss that he had late in the game, LeBron answered for it. Russ answered for it. Darvin Ham answered for it. But that that's something that 
a lot of people within the Lakers were talking about even into this morning. So that shot that Russell Westbrook t- took, I'm curious to see how Darvin Ham and the Lakers respond Wednesday night. Will they bring Russell Westbrook off the bench? How will they handle their rotation? But there's not a quick fix for this team. There's not a trade that they can go make out there. Every team is asking for everything that the Lakers have asset wise. And what they have is those two 2027 and the 2029 unprotected first round picks. Charlotte could be an option with Terry Rozier. The Indiana package with Buddy Hield and Miles Turner could be a package. One that I reported on this morning, Josh Richardson from the Spurs, your Spurs, Michelle. That's mm-hmm. another guy that the Lakers have called on recently and I think will engage again with, with San Antonio. So th- there's not great options out there that can propel this team to be an overnight contender uh, anytime soon. So it, it's it's deja vu all over again. I feel like we literally ended the season with this exact topic and we are picking right back up with this exact topic. Uh, Evan, in a perfect world, how do you see the Russell Westbrook Lakers chapter playing out? In a perfect world, I would see it playing out with uh, them mending whatever beef they have. Um, I'm a big Russ fan. I think Charles Barkley bought, brought up about his energy and his uh, body language. Regardless of which, whether you like him or not, he used to always play with a certain type of passion and fire that you like to see. And I think uh, if the coaching staff can't get it out of him, I think um, the leaders of the team have to be accountable. This is still LeBron's team. This is still an Anthony Davis type team. They have both they have goals they want to accomplish. So I think it has to come from them in order to get their teammate, their brother to really, you know, get on the get on the train and, and let's turn around. He's still a top 50, top 30 player in the world. So to have those three guys, you do a lot more help than harm, you know. Look, Russ has not played well. He's not shot well. There's no way around it. Has he defended better in spots? He he put up some great defense against Kawhi in that game. He's had his moments. But at the end of the day, the Lakers aren't putting him in the best place to thrive. He's being asked to be a standstill shooter. He's being forced to create offense late in the clock. It's it's not where he thrives. So can they t- cater their offense a little more to better benefit him? Of course. Bringing him off the bench may help that. Spelling LeBron instead of sitting next to LeBron may also help that. There's some bad body language on that team. There's... It's a long season. They have to get it together. There's no way around it. They're not trading Russ tomorrow. I mean, maybe they will. I don't know. But they're they're not trading Russ tomorrow. They're going to have to mend fences somehow. That shot at the end of the game was bad. Uh, there's another possession late in that game where AD came and took the ball out of his hands and essentially sent him to the corner, and he was upset. That's bad. LeBron refusing to comment on it. Leadership. But it just shows that he knows what's going on, and they're trying to fracture that team. Um, I think there's ways to put him in better places while he's on the court, but they just seem to all be frustrated and only winning will fix that. And they're not a good team to be winning right now. Right. The one, the one fix doesn't seem even feasible at this point. Um, Adam Silver, I, this next topic is one of my favorites to even think about. So Adam Silver went and spoke with Suns employees a lot about the Sarver situation. He took questions and then ultimately tanking came <clears throat> up. What can be done about tanking? And that's going to be a big topic all season long because of Victor Wimanyama. And he addressed the the idea that the league office has considered relegation, which of course is one of the best things about European soccer and, and the idea that a team has no incentive to tank because you will drop down a league. Um, He ultimately said it's not good for the league's business model. However, do we like the idea of relegation in the NBA? Evan, you, you play like, what would it be like to know that if your team just sucks so bad, you're out of the NBA the following season, what would that feel like? That would, uh, that would definitely not be what I signed up for. That's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) But I think after being, you know, with the Sixers and being towards the beginning of the tank Sixers, one thing I felt that wasn't, you know, always necessarily fair was like when they were openly tanking and we were trying to discuss like the value of the player's time and what we were competing for. And it was like, we're just sitting here and having our time wasted for a year or a year and a half until they slide out and pick brand new players and then send you off the river. That's 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 a tough gig, you know, to really prepare for. You have to really be a consummate pro to really stay focused on, you know, what's next and the hope that the free agency or your agent's able to get you into a better situation. I, I don't dig front office guys to come in and make those decisions because they probably never hooped and they yet to pull the the wedgie out their ass. No offense. <laughs> no, no offense. Glad you threw that in there at the end. Eddie. 
and look, as a fan, tanking sucks, but it is a part of the game. Like you, you almost have to accept it in a sense. I always feel bad for the players. If you're a player, a draft pick means yeah. nothing to you. It's just, it's, it's, it's a roster spot that might take your spot. You're there to win. You, you have pride. There's professional pride with being in the NBA and wanting to play well, wanting to look well. Right. Uh, it sucks as a fan to know that, Hey, when we get to February, some teams are just going to put a bad product on the floor. But that's the nature of the league. That's the nature of every league. There's always going to be a deflection point to me when they talk about, yo, you know, uh, if you if you're like the X team in the playoffs, you got a better spot than the last team. You'll see teams tanking their way out of the playoffs to be that team to have the best opportunity to get them one shot. There's almost really no fix. Uh, I've I've seen them toy with the lottery with all kind of stuff. You know, relegation is a lot. That's a lot to ask for the league and ever ask the players and you know, we're talking about $120 million payrolls and you're going to play 30 G oh, yeah. games. Like that's, this is, there's too much here. There's a lot of, there's smoke with this, I guess, but I don't see any fire with this situation. You're telling me that if the Oklahoma city thunder continues to do what they do, that it's not right that they should be in a different league altogether so that we can sort of incentivize this not to keep happening. Look, I get it. I see it from both sides, but there's some idea of just the cutthroatness of, a relegation situation that is, I, I would think, terrifying to a team. Shams, I'm just sitting here like dreaming about relegation. Am I crazy? I feel, I feel like I'm crazy. Yeah, but it just I mean, I'm, like- <laughs> you, you, you know me. I'm, I'm always looking from a factual perspective. Uh, I, this isn't a, a, a real, you know, thing that 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 is being discussed. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, from a bargaining perspective, mm-hmm. this is something that the league would have to negotiate with the with the MBPA. So it hasn't even reached that perspective uh, yet, and I, I, I don't expect it to, mm-hmm. but. Listen, I, I think tanking has been around from for years now. Evan, Evan was was part of a a, a tanking team, so um, I I don't think this is going to be something that that has real real traction. Well, a girl can dream. A girl can dream. Uh, new segment time. That man has a family. This is really just our our blatant excuse to be able to show some badassery that has happened in the last few days. And it's got we've got dunks, we've got ankle breakers, we've got everything, and we start things off with the rookie possibly rookie of the year who knows a lot of people think so how about ben caro <laughs> y'all <laughs> Evan, that, Evan, that's got to be dunk of the year so far right <laughs> Evan, sure. t- t- Evan, as a player you you dunk on the little guy taking a charge that's not the same right that's like i dunked on him but he was a cone right <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm low key jump that was impressive i'm not gonna lie that was impressive the only thing i will say is it was kind of set up because he was trying to take a charge if his heels were on there but for a 19 year old baby his first game in a league a debut, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it to him i'm gonna give him snaps all right that don't listen no to baby. me I've, I've never i've never seen the top of the rim so don't don't listen to me i'm just <laughs> i'm crazy How about that? that don't count you never <laughs> Eddie, I'm with you though. It, it just looks fun. It looks so fun to be able to do that. But yeah, he does not look like a baby. That is a that's a grown man right there. Colin Sexton, come on up because he had a moment right past the MVP. Yep. How? And I, I hope Jokic uh, brothers saw that too. <laughs> you know they did. That's a cold move. That's disrespectful. Honestly, what he did just there. He, he looked like he told him, I'm going left. There's nothing you can do here. Like, just take it. That's great. I love that. I love when the big guys, when the little guys take the big guys. Like, I yeah, feel like Diana Taurasi about centers. What do they do? <laughs> but, uh, the, the inside joke is that, like, you can do this to Jokic every time. Jokic is not a great defender. You know what I mean? You yeah. can literally go Jokic and do this to the league MVP. If, if you're yes. a like me, this play right here is exactly why you're like, they'll never win a title. There's no way. If you're a hater like me, well, that was nice. I, 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 looks like he told him he was going to do it. All right, this next dude, oh, we will never stop talking about him. Not until he's in an NBA uniform. How? Wembenyama. Why? Who? What? How? It, 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 to get blocked, but then also fall on your back, There's that has to feel awful. That has, <laughs> like, how do you recover from that? <laughs> That's correct. That's now, the Giannis block. But, but now how you felt when you were talking about Banchero dunking on Corey Joseph, this is how I feel about the 7'5 kid blocking somebody. <laughs> you talking about the 7'5 kid that blocked the dude? 7'5. <laughs> no Every big time deal, no I hear that, it makes no sense, 7'5. No sense at all. But I'll watch it all day, and I can't wait to see it for reals, for reals. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 
Gotta love a good D Russ moment. Dropping Mike Conley. You know what? I like Mike Conley, so I don't. I don't really want to. I don't want to pile on to Mike Conley in this next highlight, but you kind of have to. Yeah. D Lo's good for like one or two of these a year. Easy. That's sick. Oof. That, rate the push off. Et. Is this a strong one? It's a light one. Like, what do we? That's what a we light mean? one to me. That's a light one. Mike Conley was thirsty. That's Buckeye on he Buckeye was. grind right there. He literally swiped. That, that is his OG. Man. You're right. That is yeah, his OG. Out, yeah. Shout out to Jazz for winning Ooh. the game. Jazz still won. <laughs> Big time shot from D. Russ. Took it in OT. That's nasty though. That's, that's tough. That was that's that no Jazz. Who would have thought? Like that's that's embarrassing. You know what? We're not going too far away for this next one. Um, again, with the Jazz, somebody tell him what's up, but Markinen over Ooh. Gobert. That's nasty. <laughs> B- business decision by Rudy. That's that's a lot. That's... <laughs> that's Lord Markinen, business or not, he was in the frame. Lord, Lord He's Markinen didn't go for the block, though. Yeah. Most incredible cool player right. trajectory right now. Having Lord a great season, Markinen. Lord. I don't think marketing yeah. got the memo of what we're trying to do. I, here. Didn't, <laughs> I didn't know he had that. I didn't know he had that in him from the dotted line. Jeez. Well, I I, I feel nice. like he thinks that no one knew he had that in him, and now he's having a moment to remind the world or what what he yeah. is. But coming up next, Eddie, I'm putting you on the spot. You somehow can you convince us that that Jazz team that we just saw is going to make the playoffs, and can Evan convince us? that the Sixers will not make the playoffs. This is going to be a lot of convincing on your part. Get your inner lawyers out. All of that coming up next right here on Run It Back. Good luck, boys. Get your pencils out. Oh, Shams with the tweet. Zion Williamson, a posterior hip contusion. Of course, missing the, the finish of the Pelicans jazz game. Shams with us, of course, right here and can update us in real time, what is the latest? I was hoping we'd be at least a month into the season before we had a tweet like that, Shams. But what is the uh, what's the latest on Zion? Yeah, it's like it's like only injuries can hold the Pelicans back right now. But the latest is that both Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson will be reevaluated today for both of their injuries. Brandon Ingram suffered concussion-like symptoms. Zion Williamson with that hip uh, contusion. Both will be reevaluated. I'm told the Pelicans. We'll be conservative with both players in case they have to miss time potentially. But, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate that Zion Winston had that tough fall on his hip and Brandon Ingram had the hit across his head. So uh, both those guys will be reevaluated today. And, uh, you know, I think you just got to hope for the best. But neither injury appears to be significant or anything long, long term. Ooh, looks like a stinger. Looks like it hurts. Sorry, uh, moving over to the Lakers. The latest with Mo Harkless. What do you have? So Lakers worked out Mo Harkless last week, met with him, and they're still considering potentially signing him into this week and next week. They have 15 guaranteed roster spots. They could waive someone and bring him in, uh, but there's clearly a need for wing depth and shooting and front court uh, experience on this Lakers team. Uh, they, they're really going solo with Anthony Davis at center, playing Damian Jones a little bit. But right now, I would expect the Lakers to continue to check if Mo Harkless could be an option or other players uh, that they could bring in to work out. Miles Turner, what do you have? Miles Turner had that ankle sprain, uh, unfortunately landing on a ball boy before the mm. season opener last Wednesday for the for the Pacers. Um, I'm told he is expected to return soon. He's he's going to join the the team on the road trip this week, so he could return as soon as Wednesday in Chicago or Friday against the Wizards. Did we ever talk about how's the ball boy? I feel like we don't get injury updates on the ball boy after that. <laughs> like, is, he okay? is he okay? I hope he's okay. I hope he didn't get in trouble. Uh, Zach Levine, any updates? Zach Levine missed the first two games of the Bulls season. He came back uh, the other night and he he looked well uh, Saturday um, against the Cavaliers. He shot the ball well. I was at that game. He looked like he had his springs, but I, I am told that this knee issue that he's dealing with is going to be something to monitor, at least for the first half of this season. Um, you know, whether it's back-to-backs, managing his minutes, that's something that the Bulls are going to have to go through. It's unfortunate, both with him and Lonzo Ball, both players underwent surgeries. Lonzo in January and Zach in May, and this is still an issue that they're going to be dealing with. Lonzo Ball remains out. The hope is he's going to be back for the second half of the season. Zach Levine is playing, but they will manage his load at different points. And I know you're on top of all that. I know Mondays are busy for you. Shams, thank you so much. Run off.
go do great things. We're waiting on all your tweets. So I got, I've got my notifications on, so don't worry. We won't miss anything. Uh, you guys, though, get to stick around because we're going to do a little, uh, a little convince me. This is basically for your inner high school mock trial hero persona. So I'm going to give you a topic and you've got to defend it. You've got to convince us somehow. Maybe you don't believe it. Maybe you do. That's when we're going to know if you're good at this or not. So Eddie, you're up first. Uh, the undefeated Jazz convince me that they will make the playoffs. Well, they have a three-game head start already on all the tankers. <laughs> um, there's 10 playoff spots. And maybe Danny Ainge is just stubborn. Maybe he just hears what we say about him all this time, about him tearing it down and how he's so great at killing the everything you've had at that franchise before and building it to his own thing. And he just wants to prove a point. But all jokes aside, they have a solid roster. Colin Sexton hasn't even found his groove over there just yet. Um, th this is a team that can win some games. They can be competitive. Yo, they won on a buzzer beater yesterday when we thought they were trying to lose. So yeah, maybe they're just they're going to attack it all year. I think I think there's a chance. Evan's got a poker face. Uh, are you convinced, Evan? <laughs> I'm I'm, pre I'm pretty convinced. I'm I'm a big Kelly Olenek fan, so I'm, I'm rooting for him. Okay. Shout out, to, oh, I did <laughs> shout out to Kelly, like randomly very clutch in his career. Couple buzzer beaters, like he's he's no joke. I like Kelly. I like he's that. Under, I didn't have it on my bingo card, but I, I like that we got that shout out in. <laughs> but okay, Kelly so Eddie, my, you did it. Kelly and my guy KD had a little scuffle a few years back. Just a little, <laughs> a couple elbows exchange. Like, hey, it's. I have no clue how that happens. Kelly's the nicest dude on earth. And when he right, beat like, Kelly, it's like, damn, bro. Like, you just missed out on a really good plan. Like, you understand what I'm saying? He's a oh, really, really good plan. You know You're sad. <laughs> You're sad like, about man, a friendship. Yeah, like, Tease Kevin after that game, and he didn't even remember. Like, I, I don't know. I think he, I don't think he hit me. I don't know. He just, it, it's just a blur. I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, I, okay. Okay. Evan, you up? You ready? Okay, you've got to convince us that the winless Sixers will not make the playoffs. Oof. All right. Well, one, to start off, I don't like their depth. I think uh, they're super top heavy. I'm not a fan of the bench at all. The bench has proven that they've been struggling to score. I think at most they put up 17 points in a game. I think that's going to hurt. I think along with the depth, the Sixers have to account on their main players staying healthy. So that's Joel Embiid, who has a history of being injured, along with James Harden, who's still trying to get conditioning up and trying to carry the team as of right now to start the season. I feel like he's the wear on his tear on his body right now is already crazy. And then you have to look at the relationship over the past couple of years. The static with Doc Rivers, even though I'm not worried about it, it has been there and you have to comprehend, understand the relationship or wonder what the relationship he has with his players and in that locker room every year with so much uh, negative energy around the, the organization and the city, you know, it seems as though things start, start to crumble. And um, with a reputation, uh, with a reputation of a couple of players that never made it past the second round or one big, I can see how certain guys might be able to quit and just not make the playoffs. Are you convinced Eddie? It's a tough one. I, you know, I think the I think the help is a great point. James has been playing 39 minutes a game, three games into the season. Joel's played 36. Tyrese Maxey's played 37. And those are guys who, again, at the top, they've had histories of injuries. So, hey, I, I Evan got me. I, I'm with it. He's <laughs> 11 seed for the Sixers. Oh, my God. That's, I can't even imagine. Look, anything can happen, obviously, but. I cannot even imagine what a downfall that would be. Uh, time to get your front office hat on, Eddie. Convince me that Scoot Henderson should be drafted ahead of Victor Wembanyama. So, look, 7-5, it's hard to argue about what that guy is. On my podcast with Kevin, I called him Taller Kevin. There's not supposed to be Taller KD, but – you can little worry a little bit about the health. Legs aren't supposed to support all that jumping from somebody that tall. You you could really be in a tough place if that doesn't work out. Hate to wish injuries on anybody, not wish injuries. But you look at Scoot, prototypical NBA point guard. He's crazy athletic. He's learned to shoot a little bit better in his young age. He could learn to shoot much better as he goes on. He might really be the safer bet, all things considered. Um I don't know if that's that convincing an argument, but hey, we, <laughs> we've had number two draft picks uh, end up great. We've seen this stance before a few times. We've seen the yep. tall guys have the foots, the legs, the whole nine. Um, and then that number two pick 
that number three pick, Mark Jordan, ended up being something amazing. I don't know what you think, ET. Was that a good? Is that a good way to see it? Is that, is that good? <laughs> He's good. I don't think you give Scoot Henderson enough credit because of Victor, how freakish Victor is. So Scoot Henderson is what, 6'5? When I seen yeah. him play, his pull up looked marvelous. His playmaking ability looked marvelous. His physicality, his, his body was unbelievable. I mean, he's only 18 or 19 years old. We're literally looking at a two prodigies that's going to carry the game forward. And I think Scoot Henderson, if you take him with a number one pick, it won't hurt. His Somebody's thinking jumper, about it. His mid-range jumper percentage, his pull-up percentage, they end up being above average, even though his threes weren't. I feel like everybody, when they think of shooting, they just look at threes and they go, oh, that's a bad shooter. Scoot is a decent shooter, and as he stretches his range out, he could be a good shooter. I, I don't think it's, by the way, for the record, I don't think it's crazy. I do think that sometimes the hype will get ahead of us. I, I My heart actually hurts a little for women, Yama, because this is a lot. This is a lot of expectation on a really young kid. Uh, but there is a GM somewhere out there that's thinking, Maybe I'll maybe I'll be crazy and take Scoot first. So we'll we'll see. I don't think it's gonna happen, but we'll see. Yo, Mitch Trubisky went above Pat Mahomes and and Deshaun Watson. Any bad decision can happen. We can see it. It happened in the NBA. Don't worry. <laughs> bad decision. Uh, we got games tonight. Of course we do. We're in the middle of the season. We're gonna take a look at tonight's biggest matchups. Celtics are they the best? How far can Jaw take the Grizzlies? All that coming up next on Run It Back. Well, that ain't a bad list to be on. Most points by a Celtic through the first three games. You got Bird Bird and Tatum on top. 98 points and, of course, counting as we head into the Monday night roster of games. Uh, and there's some good matchups tonight, starting, of course, with Boston at Chicago. We'll look at Boston first. Uh, are we are we talking about the best team in the league right now, Evan? Yes, I definitely think so. I think... Uh... I think one thing is they have two young Lions that are scoring at a high level. They can go off and combine for 70 points at any night. And with that, I think they compete at a high level defensively. And uh, when you have that youth, you have that energy around you, I think the culture and the depth that they have, Marcus Smart, Blake Griffin, Al Horford, Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, you got Noah Vaughn. You have a lot of players that are just playing well and playing at a high level and Early on, you know, the most turnover each season, you know, those those teams usually have the best runs, and I think they're taking full advantage of that. Yeah, I think they're the best team. As the Warriors fluctuate between engaged and whatever, we've been killing you guys all for nine years, we'll, we'll be fine. The The Celtics, you know, they want to get their get back. They're, they've come in motivated. They've got a lot resting on their shoulders, with obviously with their coaching situation, and all of that. But like Evan said, they have the birthday boy, Jalen Brown, and they have Jason Tatum, who a lot of people is the MVP favorite already three games into the season. I hate to give an MVP away in October, but he's been great. He's leading the league in scoring. Um, they understand what they are, which I think is their biggest strength as well. They have their continuity, even with without Rob Williams right now, they know exactly what they want to do night in, night out. And Mazul has been killing it. You know, he's he's got them prepared, he's kept them engaged. And he's going to have to do that all season because they saw what it's like last year and they're ready to get back. So then give me a weakness. What would you name as a weakness? Eddie? Playmaking, which is like such a weird, such a weird thing, but they don't do their offense can be stagnant because in part Brown and Tatum are so, are so nice on in isolation. Um, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more ball movement. But I think, you know, it's funny we call out their weakness, but they've also made a concerted effort to run a little bit more this year to in, to try to get the ball moving, to try to create motion, uh, to stagger the defense a little bit. Uh, you know, but they don't start a traditional point guard in that sense with Marcus Smart. So that's, I guess, takes away a little bit of that. Um, but again, their continuity kind of eats away at their lack of playmaking. Yeah, I think also, too, uh... When it comes down to I'm a big Jimmy's and Joe's guy over X's and O's. So we're talking about winning a whole championship. Their superstar has to be better than another team's superstar. So my my man, Jason Tatum, he's a top three player in the world. When it comes down to championship, if he faces, uh, you know, the baby face assassin, Steph Curry, he's going to have to outperform him. And that's just what it is, in my, in, in my opinion. When it comes down to stretch and we're talking about winning it all, yeah, the franchise has to bring it home. Top so three for we, JT. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, how about the Bulls? I, I know Shams touched on the fact that there, there's some injuries that they're going to have to keep monitoring throughout the season, but 
What can they do to improve the roster as it stands right now, Evan? I think um, as it stands right now, part of it is just getting everybody healthy, in my opinion. Um, it's tough uh, having the, you know, the backcourt struggle with knee injuries, but I think also, too, they need depth on the bench as well. I'm a big fan of Javante Green. I'm a big fan of uh, you know some of their young core, but you know, uh, you have to have more with Caruso, I think, and really have have to have a big lineup on the wings and on the perimeter. I agree with Evan. I think Lonzo coming back, being healthy, being Lonzo, being that defensive force and then a playmaker on the other end, it does a lot to to help their depth. It does a lot to make them a better defensive team. Um, so, yeah, just get healthy. I think the problem for them is they're probably that tier below the true contenders. Um and unless they're going to kind of play beyond what they are, they're not, they're not really a threat to the bulls. They're not really a threat to the bucks. Um, but you know, Hey, maybe, maybe with Lonzo back, they, they can step it up and be a little bit better. It's time to talk Nets, Eddie facing Memphis uh -oh. tonight. I know, I know. I'm just going to throw it over to you. Are you, are you pleased with, uh, well, let's just start with Ben Simmons first with, with what you've seen from him. I mean, he's such a, the nice way to say it is he's a unique player. The mean way to say huh. it is a weird player. But he's just <laughs> so opposed to shooting. It's kind of, it's almost strange watching him play. But again, he hasn't played in a year. It's been quite some time. He's learning a whole new team. Uh, Kevin has spoken, a bunch of players have spoken about how unique it is to play with him and that he's so pass heavy. You can see a little mix ups here and there. Um, but, you know, I, I, Steve Nash says he's coming along. They're going to take their time with him. So I guess in that sense, he's on schedule. Okay. That's, that's a very diplomatic way of handling all that. I'm very impressed. Uh, Evan, as far <laughs> as John Morant, look, I, I believe it was, you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. What can the Nets do as far as John Morant is concerned? I think it's going to take a team. I think it's going to take a team uh, effort. You know, he's going to have to see a lot of bodies. You're going to have to get back in transition. And uh, you're going to have to stay alert. You know, we talk about what Ja can do with the ball. I don't think he gets enough credit for how hard and how well he moves without the ball. So um, you're going to have to stay in front of him, make sure um, he doesn't get one of those electrifying dunks that really sets a young, <laughs> energetic team like the Grizzlies on, on fire to go on runs. And they've been doing that year in and year out. So, And being in, in Memphis, too, they have to come in with that type of uh, and master energy as well because – Playing in Grind City is tough. Those dudes, the, the fans and everything are definitely there to support. And the energy in there is crazy. I mean, sticking with the yeah, Memphis thing, I, we, we watched some of the highlights. And we're, we're going to still talk about Jaw, Eddie. Is, is is he for real? Like, what what am I missing here? Is there any weakness? What is the weakness in Jaw Morant's game? Well, he's shooting off the charts this year from three. Um, I think much like Scoop, like we mentioned earlier, there's a world where Jaw just begins to shoot better and gradually starts to shoot better. Obviously, if he's shooting the three at a high clip, that completely changes how you guard him. You can't guard him. So it's it's over with. You just pick your poison. But no, he's for real. He's in, he's in, he's gonna be an MVP candidate for the next half of his career. He's ridiculous. He's one of those players where as a regular human, it would terrify <laughs> me to guard him. My knee yeah. ligaments are shaking right now just thinking about it. So Evan's right. Like it takes the whole team. It's easy to say, yo, Ben's gonna guard him and he's gonna he's gonna shut him down. But Ben's going to have some issues himself. You're going to have to be there on the back end. You're going to have to rotate. You're going to have to step a little bit off those shooters to make sure he doesn't have open lanes. Um, but he, he's amazing. I love watching him play. Uh, we've got another game tonight, Denver at Portland, a hot Portland squad. But with the Denver Nuggets, I know, I look, we're not, it's three games in. I get it. But we have to talk about something, right? So is this Nuggets team, from what you've seen so far, do they have enough that they could pose a real threat, say, to the Warriors, Evan? I don't think so. Uh, we spoke on it earlier. I just think defensively, if it comes down to it, this is a pick and roll heavy league. I think if you throw Jokic into the pick and roll once again, I think that's where it comes down to at the end of every season. And and the Warriors have uh, the Nuggets number. It's just one of those things. I, I don't think that's the team to worry about, even though I'm a huge Jamal Murray fan. I'm a big Jokic fan and, and Bones Highland as well. I could not see any big that slow stopping even kind of stopping Steph Curry all the no. actions they'll run him in off screens everything especially since he'll be guarding Draymond they're gonna run him in every action and they're gonna make him show it and there's just nothing they can do with Steph they, they beat him the other night great game fun game uh Warriors mounted a huge comeback but I just I just don't see it good team though yeah. <laughs> 
the throwaway line. Good team though. Okay. Well, about, about that good team though, two-time MVP. What do the Blazers do? Can they shut down Jokic tonight? Um, yeah, like I said prior to, you just have to, I, I hate saying it repeatedly because it sounds like I have something against them. Make them guard, throw them in a pick and roll. Everything else is going to occur. If we're going against best player versus best player, this is uh Dame Mr. 60 point Lillard. I think he's <laughs> averaging a career 48 points versus Nuggets. So, I mean, I, I, second night of a back to back, I think it'll be tough. But other than that, I, I'm a, I'm rooting for the Blazers in this situation. Narkic wants that smoke. I don't know if he's going to win the battle, but he's been wanting that smoke since they were pups in the league. So yeah. uh, shut him down. I don't know, but I think they win this game. Yeah, I feel like shut him down is a relative term. Maybe it changes from, from player to player. I don't know what shut it down with Jokic actually means, but we're not done here yet. We still have several, many tons of minutes left, and we're going to be on Tank Watch, and Tank Watch is probably going to go through this entire season. So come back, join us as we address all of that on Run It Back. Run it over, run it back, yeah, yeah. Everyday wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a daily free-to-play game. Reward Machine is a free game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's Reward Machine has already given away over 5 million prizes to over 250,000 winners. To get in on the action, all you have to do is log in daily, spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on FanDuel Casino. Oh, it's Tank Watch. We are on Tank Watch tonight. It's Utah at Houston. I don't think Utah is on Tank Watch because nobody's told them about it. But which one, if anybody, is going to tank harder in this game? Because remember, Utah's 3-0, and guys. What do you expect, Eddie? Uh, Houston. They got this down pat. <laughs> they played two close games and then got the pulled the, the loss from the clutches of victory. So I think they got it. <laughs> Evan, you agree? You have to agree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree too. I think Houston, uh, they're too prone. I, I, I think they got the memo. They understand. Everybody got paid. They're gonna do their job. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's gotten the email. They acknowledge it. Oh, we've got. We. I love what we're about to do right here. This is called on the fly parlay. You guys are going to design this amazing four leg parlay. People have a chance to win. Eddie, what do you have first? I have Ben Simmons to score over ten points tonight. He look. We talked about it earlier. He's off and on. He played better on the road in the preseason. He's going to be engaged tonight guarding John Morant. I got him attacking. I got him I got him going over 10 points for the first time this season. Okay, so Ben Simmons, what else? On top of that, I have Jalen Green over 30 points. Jalen has been off and on this season. Uh, he's there, The Jazz are coming off second out of back-to-back. He played overtime last night. Uh, Jalen likes to get him up, so I'm going to just say he's going to go over 30. I, I like the young guy. I think he's going to have a great season. Okay, Evan. Okay, like so for I have the Raptors heat. Uh, I think I have, uh, uh, I think I got them going under. Under, okay. And 216 for, and a half, all right. Yeah, and then for Marcus Smart, I have him making more than, was it, one and a half threes per game? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so I have Ben Simmons, that's who? Okay, so let me get this right. Ben Simmons has to score over 10. Jalen Green over 30. Raptors heat under 216 and a half. And Marcus Smart over one and a half three pointers if all four of those legs hit and you feel like doing this bet 100 bucks you'll win two thousand eight hundred and ninety one dollars oh this sounds like you guys made it sound so easy and fun <laughs> i like it i like our odds i like smosher and nick nurse just zoning each other up for 48 minutes and having an 80 point that's, game that's great i, I kind of like that too uh, both teams, or I feel as though uh, Toronto's filled with two five men that have the ball so much. So I feel like that's going to set a certain pace to the game. And then the Heat, you know, Jimmy, it's it's either he gets thirty five or he gets eighteen, and I feel like that's going to set the tone. <laughs> Guys, if this works. If this works, we're taking it on the road. Well done. That's going to do it for us today on this Monday. We will be back tomorrow for a little more Run It Back. Enjoy the games.